There you go. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I was like holding my breath. I'm like, wait, I'm trying to type your name in. I'm like, what's going on? I can't see. <laughs> All right, we did it. Yes, we finally worked. Yes. Well, thank you for having the suggestion. So we've been trying to go live for, well, we only tried two days, but we tried a lot of times in those two days. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so thank you for allowing me to be a I guess go live on your your page so that we can get um, this interview conducted. So yeah. let's get started. <laughs> sure. All right. So if you could please introduce yourself and um, tell us what you do currently for work. So my name is Alicia Crichton, and I am currently an assistant principal at a high school. Okay. Awesome. And um, what did you want to be when you grew up? When you were a little girl? Um, funny enough, I was going through my mother's collectibles because she still has everything. Mm -hmm. And there was a paper that said that when I grew up, I wanted to be a taxi driver. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, good thing, you know, life happens. You made some adjustments. <laughs> but I knew I always wanted to be a teacher since elementary since sixth grade I decided that I do wanted to teach I didn't know what particular area until I got to high school and I had a love for math since sixth grade but it like strengthened in high school so I figured high school would be I mean in high school that was the time when I decided I wanted to do math education okay and what did you think um, success was like as a teacher um, I don't know. So success for me, do you mean in my career? Do you mean in life in general? So what did you, so you wanted to be a teacher because why? Like, what did you think that was going to Okay. For you? So I wanted to be a teacher simply because there aren't a lot of black teachers who are in um, math, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, growing up, you will see, you won't see any representation of you in the math field. I did in high school, like I had a lot of um, black teachers and stuff, but it's not common, especially to be a black female in math education. Yeah. So it was something that I knew that I wanted to give back to my community, like, oh, you know, you could be cool. You could be fun. You could be cute. You could be a nerd. <laughs> like, you, could be, you know, you could be everything in one. It doesn't necessarily has to be a certain pathway. So I definitely wanted to do education just for that reason. Okay. And it's funny because um, we talk about this a lot amongst our friends is that you were very fortunate I think to grow up and have a lot of teachers of color. Whereas right, we always have <laughs> a lot of people in our friend group don't necessarily didn't have that experience. I think right. I might have had five. And like teaching in Connecticut really opened my eyes to that because you like we would talk in college and be like, "What you mean? You ain't have any black teachers?" Yeah, no, I think it was like my kindergarten, my first grade teacher. And then um, maybe, like, two in high school. But Where, like, that was the first to me. Like, I had, like, five white teachers in my whole K-12, through you know, education experience. <laughs> right, which is, which is very interesting. But also, um, I think makes it, you know, even that much more better that you decided to take that same path um, right. to be a, a, a math teacher. Um, yes. So you decided pretty, pretty early on what you wanted to do. So tell us the steps that you took to um, uh, actualize your dream. Well, um, so I decided to go to UConn um, because they had a five-year program where I can graduate with my bachelor's and my master's. Um, the runner-up was Seton Hall in New Jersey. Um, they also had a very good education program, but I chose my school because 
I don't know. I used to get migraines a lot back then. And when I went to Yukon, I didn't get a migraine. <laughs> so I was just like, I'm going to go here. <laughs> Really? Like, straight up. That was the reason why I chose the University of Connecticut, <laughs> because I didn't get a migraine when I went to visit the campus. Um, but I decided for myself that I wasn't going to apply to any schools in New York. I didn't apply to CUNYs. I didn't apply to SUNYs. I didn't apply to, like, regular public or private colleges. I did not apply to one school in New York because I knew if I – Necessarily for myself, if I wanted to be successful, I needed to get out of New York. So um, I chose Connecticut overall. So I went there. I did their five-year program where I got my bachelor's and I got my master's. So um, I started working as a teacher at the age um, of 22, turning 23. And three years in, I decided to go back to school to get another master's, um, but for education leadership, because I knew I eventually wanted to be a assistant principal to a principal. You know, I'm kind of contemplating principal right now, you know, but in sense of like not being it at all. <laughs> so but, what um, was your undergrad and first master's in? Also, take one step back here out of the frame. There you go. Really? Okay. So, um... My bachelor's was in math, secondary education. Um, it sucked at the fact that the, my senior year was when they changed the rules and said that if you take this two or three more courses, you can get the master's, you can get the bachelor's in um, math education and a bachelor's in mathematics. So you could be, you could have two bachelor's which some of my um, cohorts, they did get, they were able to get that. But I was, I needed two or three more classes, which I couldn't necessarily do in my senior year. So I wasn't able to get the bachelor's in just mathematics. Um, and then the master's is in curriculum and instruction. So that was that for UConn. And then um, I did the leadership program out of New York. So I would travel to New York from Connecticut every weekend because um, my classes was on Sundays. I think so, I yeah. <laughs> so I'm teaching, I'm the basketball coach, mm -hmm. and I had to do my master's program. So I was just like going crazy. And, you know, I, I had a great assistant coach, so she would coach on Saturdays or I'll coach Saturdays and then drive home for mm -hmm. class on Sundays and then come back for work on Monday. So it was like a really busy year and a half because I finished the program in a year and a half but um it was worth it you know so I got that and then I decided to take a job in London because mm -hmm. I just needed to leave Connecticut <laughs> <laughs> it, like I, I okay. needed to I needed to go <laughs> but um I took a job in London as a educator um for math and mm -hmm. I just wanted to um necessarily grow as a teacher because I was doing a lot of I would say administrative work in my school in Connecticut and I was just like this is a lot doing teacher and administrator type of things mm -hmm. and I just wanted to focus more on my craft so that when I do become an assistant principal I have more to talk about with teachers and more ways to build with them okay. so um I did London best two years of my life you yeah. <laughs> know and came back to New York and what my third year in New York now I'm assistant principal so I can say everything worked out <laughs> for sure for sure um and so um what is your idea of success now so my idea of success I would say overall is being a, in a position where you can live comfortably um, and just like, just be happy. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say that I'm at a point where I do feel successful. Um, I'm comfortable in everything that I do. Um, I'm happy where I'm at. Um, life is good, <laughs> you know? So um, I think, you know, for me, that was my definition of success, like a point where you're comfortable, you know, and I always kind of, 
I didn't always equate it to like anything monetary or whatever, but you know, just being comfortable. And that's what I equate success to. Them. So I had a conversation with two of my friends, um, the like maybe two, three weeks ago. And they were like, you know, do we just can't wait till we can get our lives together? And like, <laughs> and like well, maybe, you know, they're like, I don't think I'll ever have my life together. And like, right. I'll have <laughs> and so I was just like, I do. Feel, I was like, I feel like people get to that point. And I was like, as a matter of fact, I was like, I feel like my friend Alicia would say that she's got her life all together. Oh, when well, you text me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't have your back at all. So I <laughs> shot you a text with confidence. <laughs> I was confident that you were going to say, yeah. And not in like a cocky way, but I, it, for me as your friend, seeing um, the things that you've gone through, the things that you've accomplished, and not saying that I know you don't have more to go, um, but for me, I was like, she's got to feel like, you know, she's got it. <laughs> <laughs> under control and you were like girl no I was, like, <laughs> I was like well if she doesn't have it together I'll never know <laughs> I'm kidding but um do you want to speak to that a little bit um I just feel like like you said like I would never have like my life completely together do I feel like it's going in the direction that I want it to go in yes um, like, do I have some kind of control over it? Yes. Um, but there's always points in times where I'd be like, what the hell am I doing? Like, <laughs> what's going on? What's next? What do I need to do? Um, you know, it's mayhem or something that's just happening around me. So I just feel like, you know, there's, there's always something to do or that can be done. So it's never settled you know, so that that's why I said, girl, no, like, <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's okay. Um, so tell me something that you um, learned or that you were in the process of learning um, that you wish you had learned sooner. Um, hmm. So I'm learning... What I, you know, not necessarily that I learned sooner, but I'm definitely learning that it's all about networking mm -hmm. and who you know. Um, you can be the smartest person in the book. <laughs> you can have it all. But if you don't have the right connections and the right network, then, like, it's just, it's going to take a long, it's going to take longer, much longer. You know what I'm saying? And people like looking out for you or whatever the case may be. Um, I think that was something that I started to learn. Um, and that, and not that I'm like, I'm very much a friendly person at work. Cause to me, I'm at work most of the time than I am at home. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So it's just like, I like to be in an environment that is friendly, cordial. I don't need to be a best friend or anything, but we can always be on good vibes. And I'm learning in this role that you know not everyone is going to like you and you they will smile in your face and talk to you behind your back you know what I'm saying which I've never necessarily experienced mm -hmm. but now that I'm in a leadership role That's you right. know and the, you know there's just a lot more animosity than I thought I would have to deal with mm -hmm. um but you know it is what it is you know you'll find people who do have your back <laughs> at the end of the day so I'm not too worried about it just moving forward yes and so how do you um how do you expand your network or how do you build your network so just going to a lot of workshops and conferences and events so like going to um anything that has to do with assistant principals right now i'm going to a lot of math conferences or math um i joined the math assistant principal um group so they have meet monthly meetings and then I go to workshops for new assistant principals and I try and go to other principal meetings with my principals. So I just try and like go to different things and the special education monthly meetings that my principal now has me going to because he's trying to give me special education on top of the math department because when you do good work, <laughs> they just add it on. <laughs> but, um, 
So, yeah, so just going to different things. I've been meeting a lot of people, taking a lot of people contact information. I'm like, I'm not one to shy away from talking and getting to know someone and be like, oh, what's your email? What's your contact information? Because at the end of the day, I'm sure there's something that you can offer me, you know, in helping, you know, whether it's to add things to my math department or um, for me professionally, like I'm always good with feedback. So I've been building a good network, especially with other math assistant principals. So just just building that. Nice. Um, And um, trying to think of the other question. What... Um, what, 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 where do you see yourself in the next five years? Woo, child. (laughs) Um, I will still be locked in here as an assistant (laughs) because my tenure is for five years. So I'm locked in for five years. So I'll still be here, hopefully with a department that runs itself. Um, in the sense that I don't need to be so hands-on and micromanaging, because that's not necessarily my style. Mm -hmm. Um, But to get it where I need to, I have to be like that for now. But I hope in the next five years, I have a department that's running itself. Um, I'm getting my tenure. Might have some little Crichtons running around. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So um... Life balance. Work-life balance, you know, so, you know, I see potential is there, so, you know, might be some little ones running around. (laughs) I like it. That makes me happy to hear. (laughs) Um, Okay, so tell me this. I um, call myself the amateur expert and claim to know a little bit about a lot. So if you could please um, teach me something new, Um, anything. Hmm. Okay, so June 28th is known as the perfect day in the math world. Why? Because the number 6 and 28 are perfect numbers. So if you take the factors of each of them, not including the number itself, so not including 6, not including 28, so 3, 2, and 1, it adds to 6. So it's a perfect number. And same thing with 28. If you take the numbers... 14, 7, 4, 2, 1, it'll add to 28. Huh. So, perfect yeah. numbers. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a math fact. You know, in the math world, <laughs> June 28th is known yeah, as the perfect day. The perfect day. <laughs> I thought you were going to hit me with Pi Day, but okay. No. <laughs> Everyone knows Pi Day, so... Yeah. You know, I had to step it up a little bit. I you know, appreciate, can't be. <laughs> appreciate that. Well, thank you. Thank you for um, being on the show, for being my friend and teaching me new things often. <laughs> um, um, I am um, looking forward to your journey over the next, not not over, over five years, but yeah. seeing as you progress in your career and in life. Um, thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you for doing this. You're welcome. And I'm glad we were able to make this work. <laughs> it, was, it was non-traditional, but we got it done. Right. <laughs> so you have to end it and okay. then save it. 